thank you for Chris and all the women that work with her, Eleanor and Sharon, and thank you very much for all the work you do. And um, I also want to thank you for uh, speaking about the Yazidi women. Um, uh, I have met some, I travel in the region, and I have met uh, some of them, and uh, I'm not going to really say many things about them. There are posters here. I have, uh, there are posters here that um, uh, will we'll give the stories, but I, I want to say today, the reason we're doing this today is the second anniversary of the brutal attack in Iraq, known as the Singar Massacre. And it's, you can see from the posters here what happened in the Singar mass Massacre. And my thoughts are with the Yazidi people who have been displaced uh, by the barbarism of ISIS. And I, I want to say to you that I'm a Muslim. And my, my husband and I were speaking about uh, today's event. And, you know, he was looking at me and, you know, we were uh, talking about what has happened. And he was looking at me and saying, you know, it doesn't make you proud to be a Muslim. But I also want you to know that um, this is not what Islam is about. But that's not, I'm not trying to defend that today. That's not why this is. But this is just barbaric men. Uh, just and the acts that they are doing are absolutely barbaric. You will see in the poster here where they burn women uh, who uh, who re resist them and resist being sex sex uh, sex slaves. And two years early in the morning, ISIS launched an attack on the town of Singa, the historic home uh, home of the Yazidi people in Iraq, and several ne neighboring towns in the region. Within hours, the Yazidi who lived in their area had been captured, powerless, and at the mercy of the Islamic State. They were all given the same ultimatum, renounce their identity and convert or be killed, basically meaning give up their religion, which, which they had practiced for many years, and, and their, their families and their, you know, their origins, they had practiced it for a very long time. And to tell somebody to give up your religion is to tell somebody to give up who you are and who does that. So by the end of the month, over 5,000 Yazidi men had been killed and placed into mass graves. And another 50,000 Yazidis who had fled into the nearby Singar Mountains had to face starvation and dehydration. And we saw on our, our television and images of very old women being, uh, were trying to walk around across the, the hilly sides. And by the end of the month, over 5,000 Yazidi men had been killed and placed into mass graves. And another 50,000 Yazidis who had fled into the nearby Singar Mountains had to face starvation and dehydration. The women and children captured by ISIS would face similarly horrific atrocities. Many of them were raped and tortured by their captors, being sold as sex slaves or forced into marriage with ISIS troops. Even children as young as nine years old were not safe from being used as spoils of war facing the rape and sexual slavery. And I, I, I remember very clearly last year, Nadia Murad Basitaha, a um, Yazidi woman, had been captured by ISIS during their, this attack, delivered an account of her experience before the United Nations Security Council. And, and I thought, what, no matter what words I said, it's her words that are important. We, the women and children, were brought by bus to another region. Along the way, they humiliated us. They touched us and violated us. They took us to Mosul with more than 150 other Yazidi family. There were thousands of Yazidi families and children who were exchanged as gifts. I tried to flee, but one of the guards stopped me. That night, he beat me. He asked me to take my clothes off. He put me in a room with the guards. They then proceeded to cut the, uh, commit their crime until I fainted. Those were the words of a Yazidi woman at the United Nations. Friends, to this day, the plight of Yazidi people continues through acts of violence, rape, and recruitment of children, and the destruction of temples. ISIS continues to, in their barbaric attempt to erase the Yazidi people and their identity. Today, over 6,500 women and our children are still in ISIS cap captivity, and another th uh, 1,200 young boys have been captured and indoctrinated as child soldiers. It saddens me to see that Yazidi people continue to face this ongoing brutality. And you know, today when I see uh, all of you and I'm, each one of you, I'm, I've met, or I'm, uh, most of you I have met in other lives, of my other lives, and I know how involved you are, and you think, 
this is one more thing you want to do this is one more you know because there is so much happening but I, I, I urge you the first thing I urge you given this evening upset go home and write to your MP uh, and I ask them what are they doing for the Yazidi and um, and you probably won't get an answer I'm sorry to say that it's summertime so in 10 days uh, email again and just just put it in your system and then um, uh, also if you keep writing they will be shown that there is an interest and come September um, there is so much honestly there is so much we can do there is a woman a women at risk program that Canada has we could bring these Yazidi women we hardly use this program and you know we we celebrate that we brought 25,000 Syrians you know Turkey has brought two million uh, Syrian refugees Lebanon who has a population of only 4 million has brought 1.5 million uh, refugees from Syria so I'm of course not criticizing the 25,000 but I'm saying we do have place in our heart and in our country for Yazidi women and I purposely now have become the vice chair of the defense committee because I want Canada to go out and there is a defense review policy and this is one place that when Chris asked me and I didn't even tell her forgive me Chris that I felt that I could come to you here and say write to the Senate Defense Committee that when we set up our defense policy we look at peacemaking we reach out to communities that are suffering that's a role we could play and I'm really working hard for us to look at how we become peacemakers rather than warmongers. And so today I say to you that we may be a few, but I, and it's, it's a joke, but not really a joke. And Stuart will say this to you, that when I, 16 years ago when I went to the Senate, they said to me, if you got five letters on a subject, there was a revolution happening on the ground. Today with emails, it's not quite the same. You get a lot more. But what I'm saying is that if we we all wrote to our representatives the issue would still come on board but the most important person to write is to the prime minister to say he's standing up for women around the world what is he doing for Yazidi women thank you very much for being here today thanks